What this NBC announcer said about Trump on live TV will make you never watch another NFL game. Now the NFL and its cronies are blaming President Donald Trump for their own stupidity and ignorance. NBC broadcaster Al Michaels was asked about his thoughts on the NFL rating decline in an interview with Philly.com this week. Michaels listed multiple factors, but of course, wasted no time circled back to President Donald Trump's September comments at a rally in Alabama where he called for protesting players to be fired. He alluded to the false notion that President Trump's comments reignited the spotlight on player protests. But the fact was that Trump didn't reignite the controversy, the controversy was never extinguished, he only called out what players were already doing. Especially the failed ex-49ers quarterback Colin Kaepernick who, because he saw his career was ending he decided to take a knee against our flag and all she stands for. The NY Times reports. Maybe Colin Kaepernick is just not that good. Whether or not Colin Kaepernick plays another down in the NFL, I'm going to say that he can achieve more off a football field than he, or anyone else in the sport, can achieve on one. Football, in the larger scheme of things, is not that important. Kaepernick, meanwhile, has a message about crucial aspects of our frayed but hopefully repairable nation that will continue to grow. If he has the devotion to work for change, he could outclass Tom Brady, or any player you might name, as someone who did something that truly matters for future generations. But I thought it might be useful to at least consider something. The conventional wisdom is that Kaepernick, who opted out of his contract with the San Francisco 49ers after last season and has yet to be signed by another team, does not have an NFL job on account of his politics. In protest against racism and police brutality, He won't stand for the national anthem, and he's increasingly outspoken on social issues. Earlier this summer in a tweet he likened the police to members of the Fugitive Slave Patrol. NFL owners, the thinking goes, must be racists who don't like his politics, or cynical pragmatists who don't like that their racist fans don't like his politics. What seems to me more problematic than Kaepernick's not having a job is the general unwillingness to consider that this situation might be justified on the merits, given Kaepernick's current attributes, or lack thereof, as a quarterback, rather than assuming, as part of a knee-jerk gospel of victimhood, that persecution must be the cause. It's not hard to make a statistical case for why Kaepernick is not playing now. He threw for a mere 187 yards a game last season, which was good enough for 30th, in a league of 32 teams. For his career, he has completed fewer than 60% of his passes. Last season, 24 passers completed more than 60%. Kaepernick, at 59.2%, was ranked 26th. If you're below 60%, you're a French guy. More damning, Kaepernick was not asked to make difficult throws, he's not a Matt Ryan-type quarterback slinging the ball far down the field on deep crosses or challenging out routes. In the current iteration of the NFL, offense rules the day, with quarterbacks tasked to put up crooked numbers on the scoreboard. Kaepernick's job was to be a game manager, making the easiest, high percentage throws. And he still struggled. What are you supposed to do with a guy like this? What can he do for you? Can he help you win? If Kaepernick deserves a spot in the league, it's only as a backup quarterback. And he will eventually get a job as one, I bet, once quarterbacks start getting hurt. But the fact that he doesn't have a job right now isn't shocking, and it doesn't have to be because NFL owners are racists who are blackballing him. The older I get, the less I care about football, but I do care about merit, and things being seen for what they are. Life is, as Dostoevsky wrote, and it is our job to figure out what the is is. I believe that's one of the core responsibilities of being human. We don't do this enough anymore. We don't ask the tough questions. We seek to align ourselves with what I think of as the control voice, whatever piped in monotone is dictating a given narrative at the moment. It's easy to feel good about yourself when you're patting yourself on the back for your inability to never fail to take the moral high ground which everyone who agrees with you reinforces and enables, one Facebook like at a time. But there is nothing real about that. It doesn't matter that Kaepernick doesn't have a job, 
it matters that so few people leave and wonder if there might be a non-disgraceful explanation. We have become the anti-meritocracy. We resent those who outperform us, outwork us, outproduce us. And the person who has been perceived to have been slighted? He is whom we now adore. The only reason Colin Kaepernick ever started kneeling was because he was for all intents and purposes, on his way out of the NFL. He knew this so his Muslim girlfriend, who has deep ties to Islamic extremism, convinced him to pull a stunt like he did. He never had an issue with any so-called cop brutality or hating our flag while he was actually still an active player for the Niners. But today since it seems like no team wants the drama Kaepernick started after he was benched when he was playing poorly for the San Francisco 49ers he has changed his tune. It has gotten to the point that he is actually begging teams to hire him. He is even saying that he will never kneel for the national anthem again if someone hires him. Gee thanks, what a guy. Way to stand up for your so-called convictions dude, chins dude.